Hello, and welcome to More Chemistry with Mr. Hicks. Today we're going to talk about hydrates. Now, in, with this video, I want you to be able to do uh, three things here. We have three goals today. Uh, first, we should be able to describe what a hydrate is. Then we're going to be able to name or write the formula of a hydrate. And finally, I'm going to show you how to determine the percentage of water in the hydrate itself. So first of all, what is a hydrate? A hydrate's a compound that has water that's bound to its crystalline structure. Uh, I kind of have an example set down here. So I have a picture of what I'm trying to represent as calcium chloride down here. And you can see the calcium chloride crystal lattice back here with the green and the orange. But intermixed within there are these water molecules. And they kind of stick right inside of the crystalline structure itself and uh, become part of the crystal that's made. Now, through heat, usually heat, we can force these water molecules right out of the crystalline structure. And when we do that, and these sort of evaporate away, if you will, we form what's known as an anhydrate substance. The anhydrate would be just whatever that compound is that's left over minus all of the water molecules that we've forced out by heating it. So, hydrates got the water in it. Anhydrate doesn't have the water in it. So, uh, the number of water molecules that's inside these crystalline structures are usually a fixed amount. Um, and it can be determined in laboratory procedures just how much water is a part of that crystalline structure. I have a couple of examples of that here. Here I have calcium chloride, and for every unit of calcium chloride, experimentally we found that there are about two water molecules for every one of the calcium chloride units. Uh, likewise, I have magnesium sulfate down here. It's also a hydrate. You might know this as Epsom salt. And the, with the magnesium sulfate, experimentally, we found out for every one unit of magnesium sulfate, there are about seven water molecules that are part of that crystal. So that people have a way of talking about these and knowing just exactly what that ratio of water molecules to anhydrate is, uh, we use a different naming system. And you can see here, we're just going to use the name of the compound itself, calcium chloride. But we're going to talk about how much water is a part of it. So this would be calcium chloride dihydrate. Di, of course, means two. You remember our prefixes back from the molecular structures, right? So we're going to use those same prefixes, mono, di, tri, tetra, hepta, hexa, octa, nona, deca. We got them all. For magnesium sulfate, it has seven water molecules. So we would say magnesium sulfate, heptahydrate, hepta meaning seven. Finally, since this is part of, usually part of the moles unit, one of the things that we can do is we can determine just what percentage of the, the uh, hydrate is water. And, of course, then we can find the percentage of it that is the anhydrate as well. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to do this very similar to the way that we did the percent composition problems. If you didn't watch that video, you might want to jump back in my series and find the percent composition video there, and uh, it'll give you extra information on that. Uh, remember, in there, I said that it was probably easiest if you just start out by calculating the molar mass of the whole thing, right? And this time, instead of finding the mass of individual elements, and dividing it by the molar mass of the whole thing. This time we do want to find the mass of it that is the water and then divide it by the whole thing. So let's first start out by just determining exactly what are our different masses that's part of this formula. So for the calcium chloride dihydrate, 
Uh, first, I'm going to say, okay, calcium, I have one calcium, right? And the mass off the periodic table for that is 40.1. And for my chlorine, I have two chlorine atoms. And so I'm going to multiply that by the mass from the periodic table, 35 and a half. So that would be 71. And when I get done with that and add those two together, I have 111.1. And that would be for the anhydrate. But this also has two water molecules for every unit of this calcium chloride. So I need to take two times water, which water is 18 grams per mole. So I'm going to take two times 18, and that would be 36. So when I add that in to my masses here, I end up with 147.1. This would be the molar mass of my calcium chloride dihydrate. If you were working in a lab and you were measuring calcium chloride out to make up a solution or use it in a reaction, you would actually have to weigh out 147.1 grams for one mole instead of 111.1 because this water molecule would be part of that crystal structure. All right, so how do we get the percentage now? So the percent is part over the whole, the part of it that is the mass of the water, which is 36 grams divided by the mass of the whole thing, which is 147.1. Going to multiply that by 100 just to slide our decimal over a little bit. And when I do that, I find that it's about 24.4%. How's that? Okay, here's what I'd like you to do. It's that time again to see if you can do it. I'd like you to figure out what's the percent of water in our magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. Go ahead and pause this, work that out, and then I'll come back and show you how I did when you're through. Okay, how'd you do? I bet you did just fine. Did you start out by calculating the molar masses of the magnesium sulfate heptahydrate? Well, we have one magnesium. That's 24.3. And we have one sulfur, that's 32.1. And we have uh, four oxygens, and those are 16 apiece for a total of 64. So the mass for the anhydrate, just the magnesium sulfate, if you were to normally calculate this, is 120.4. But you know that you have seven water molecules in there as well. So that's going to be seven times 18 more. And that's another 126 that's added to this mass for a grand total of 246.4. Now for my percentage, I can just take the amount that's water, that's what goes on the top, 126.0, and divide that by the amount of it that is the entire hydrate.
times 100 to slide that decimal, and we get for an answer 48.8%. Well, there it is. We've learned about hydrates, how to name them, and how to do some percentage math with it. So good luck with your chemistry, and we'll see you next time.